Stage three of the Giro d'Italia 2020 was the first mountaintop finish. Stage two was a smaller, you know, 5K, uh, 4K climb. Uh, but today was was the big one. Uh, so it was out, out Mount Etna, a new finish we hadn't had before. 18.6 kilometers at 7%. 7 With the last three kilometers at 9%, you can see there was a slight false flat section here. Uh, GC-wise, it was a pretty significant stage. Simon Yates lost a fair amount of time. Garrett Thomas crashed in the neutral section. He fell over a bottle. Um, and he was about nine or ten minutes down. He, he was very far down. Um, and obviously, John Van Caicedo from the break won, uh, followed by Giovanni Visconti. And Han Van Hoek, uh, who, fun fact, actually has sworn at me at a bike path when I was riding in Belgium. Uh, he came came third with a solid ride in Kelderman and in all the usual GC suspects. And um, after the stage, I was I was talking to Lantern and, and all the rest of it. And we were saying that, you know, it's a super low, low uh, quality race um, in terms of like, Performance wise, we were like, oh, it's pretty poor. Then there was a post on Twitter saying, you know, they did 5.8 watts per kilo um, and all the rest of it. And um, I was like, oh, really? That, that seems pretty high. So anyway, I looked at James Knox's power and he said 5.6 for 48 minutes. And I was like, wow, that's that's a pretty high level race. Like that's, you know, that's from, you know, Colombia was written at 5.7. Obviously, Col de Colombia in the Tour de France was, uh, sorry, the Grand Colombia uh, in the Tour de France was written at a later point. But I, I was super surprised. Um, but when we went through the power, it was slightly lower. And actually, to be honest, quite a, quite a low day out. Um, and it was surprised that Simon Yates got dropped, considering the numbers were, were pretty average. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go through the numbers now. Um, unfortunately, James Knox will, will obviously have to ignore no, because 5.6 for 48 was um, not the correct uh, numbers when you looked at compared to Masnada and Sergio Semitier. So this is the segment here, 18.77k at 6.6%. .6%, so the exact segments that we had given on pro cycling stats. Um, and follows the same gradient as well. Han Van Hoek has the KOM, uh, 47 minutes, 24. So it's, again, slightly uh, faster. In terms of VAM, 1570, 1572 is actually pretty solid, to be fair. And it's a higher level race than, than maybe, uh, performance, sorry, than, than maybe what I thought it would be. 24 average up a 6.6% gradient it is, is very solid for an hour. Um, however, it was largely driven at the bottom, which is why the watts per kilo um, are quite low in comparison to the VAM. Uh, so we'll we'll look at Han Van Hoek's file here. Um, obviously, there's no power data, but you can see, you know, obviously the part when he went was was towards the end. You can see the big kick up in speed there, even though it's a, a pretty steep part. Um, but he climbed, you know, the last part is is what again I said was a steep part, eight 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 point four percent at eighteen k an hour. That's that's not a super high level. Um, we then have Seven Kreisweg's power. Again, he was here 30 seconds back, so nothing crazy. But we'll, we'll get onto the power files in a minute. If we just look at the last part here, 18.49%. Again, like nothing crazy, like decent, but nothing like mm, off the chart. If we look at Fausto Masnada, um, he said 5.3 watts per kilo for 48 minutes. Which, to be honest, that's a pretty low level. And... You know, it's it's not really crazy. And if we look at like Dominico Pozzovivo, and I think you know, I, mean, I don't want to be harsh on him, but he's he's gone. Right? As a rider, you look at these results. I mean, man, like they're really not very they're really not very impressive at all. Um, in terms of the tour on any of the climbs, he was he was well off the pace. So that is w w what we're obviously dealing with in the, in the Giro. That the, the level isn't too high. Um, this is like normal power data to the point where like, you know, if you said to a good amateur, good Conti rider, you know, whack four, four, 5.3 watts per kilo for 48 minutes, they'd be able to do it for sure. And at the end of a stage, again, obviously it's impressive, but it's not off the chart. If we look to Roglic's power, which I am going to do a video on, Roglic released all his power, they were well, way, way higher than this. Like Cold Hour Laws, which was an hour mid, um, obviously like third week of the tour, went up to altitude 2200 was five and a half so the difference between the giro and the and the uh, and the tour this year are huge uh if we look at sergio somitia's power again he agrees 5.3 the difference in timings was you know marginal three seconds that's basically the same time he did 5.3 and at the to be fair here it was driven pretty hard 22 and a half k an hour and the wheels 5.4 so not actually the harder part um, and then when the pace relented, there was this midsection here where it was like five watts per kilo for eight minutes, which is like for these guys, these guys pretty much tempo. And you maybe you're going to say the altitude is quite high. I, I disagree, really. Um, at this point here, it was 1700. For most of these guys, they do altitude training. They stay at 2000 meters. So I, I wouldn't really say that's a huge issue. And if we look at the last 12 minutes, he was 
did 5.3 was Piquito. And he has got a lot of lap times here. I don't know what's going on here. If he was pulling or what, but it's a bit odd here. Yeah, maybe he was pulling when he was on the front. He did 3.52 and then um, here he did 3.39 in the wheels. I, I don't really know why he's using the lap function. But again, it, it's it's not actually super high level. Um, if we now, this is James's and Knox's power. Um, and if we go to the one to the right of his, um, which was Giovanni Carboni, who finished two minutes down, his said he did 5.4, which again, I think could be a little bit too high. But the, yeah, the VAM is pretty high on this climb, to be honest. Um, I think, you know, and if we look at the Dr. Ferrari calculations, which I, th I think I'll go to now, um, they're not very accurate. And there's a reason why they're not very accurate. And the reason why I, I don't really see the point um, in doing the comparisons. Obviously, when Dr. Ferrari is doing these calculations, bikes were significantly um, heavier um, than what they are now. Uh, the rolling resistance is significantly uh, lower. And I'm talking maybe at 40k an hour, 5 to 10 watts at this speed, maybe only 2 to 3. But that's all adds up more aero on the wheels, on the on the equipment, um, in the clothing. And again, you might say maybe not, but at 23k an hour, it could be a couple watts. You add that all together. And that's the reason why he's saying it's 5.89 for full sang, etc. for the last nine minutes. When if we look at it, we, we can tell that's that's incorrect um, because, we, you know, we can look at Sergio Sermitier's power file and he was doing 5.3 and he was doing, OK, 16 and a half K an hour and they were doing like 19. But I, I think potentially the um, the timings aren't 100% correct. But so maybe, they, you know, they were going, maybe it was the last part is slightly higher, like 5.6, 5.7. But I, I wouldn't really say that the, the calculations, if, if he goes for this all together, um, he goes if we go further down he's saying you know 5.8 watts per kilo is 1540 the bam's 23 um that's not that's not the same um okay it's good to predict timings but i don't think they're doing 5.8 watts per kilo for 48 minutes based on the fact that james knox was the highest power data we saw and he said it was doing 5.6 um it was james knox's and he finished like you know, obviously it, that's not correct because people were going fast and did 5.3. Um, so again, the the level in the Giro is, is really not too high. And to be honest, it's probably the easiest Grand Tour to win this year because I think, you know, the World Tour, we're probably getting, we might get Pogaccio, we'll get Roglic, we'll get Carapaz, I know. So I think actually the Giro, the level here is, is really not too high. Um, and I think, you know, an unformed Garrett Thomas or Simon Yates would have, would have romped this stage. If we look at like this here, Dave, how many Grand Tours have they won? Obviously, Nibali's won a lot, but recently, non Micah, KOM, Classic, Fool Sang, good on the week long races. Wilco Kelderman, he's never really done anything. Came fourth in the Vuelta in 2017. Castro Vieja was getting spat in the tour as a domestique. Comes eight. Pots of you we've been through. Cries of like coming back from injury. Pale Bill Bauer. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, the level is not. It's not super, super high. Um, and we can see, again, Masnada, such as Amitye. So, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, to be honest, um, what, what the level is like. I mean, OK, Zacharini, you might say he was going pretty well at the tour, but I'd say, you know, this was a bit of an off day for him, potentially. Um, so, yeah, th those are my thoughts um, for the day. The, the, the level isn't super high. The Ospikido aren't super high. Um, but I hope what that means is that we're going to have, you know, Simon Yates here is four minutes down. What I'm hoping for is that Simon Yates get discover some legs and takes it to them. Obviously, Garrett Thomas is is 11 minutes down, which again might sound quite dramatic, but he's got uh, a 35 kilometer time trial and a 15 kilometer time trial, 50 kilometers of time trial. He can wipe out probably four four to five minutes on some of the worst time trialers um, in that. So that means he's six minutes down. Six minutes down. Froome's had bad days. They'll have bad days. If Garrett Thomas can stay consistent, he can win this tour. I just don't know how bad his injuries is. So let's say tomorrow he wakes up, he feels OK. Um, and, you know, there's not too many hard stages straight afterwards. And let's say he gets around them without losing any time. He comes the last week, you know, he has a good TT in the middle week and stuff. And the last last day TT, he's strong as well. I genuinely think he can still win it. And you might say this is British bias, but I just think with the Giro, it's so open. It's so unpredictable. He has the strongest team, I think, by far. Um, maybe uh, okay. Apart from Michigan Scott, in my opinion, and maybe Trek, but I think you know he's he's shown that he's got the pedigree in Terreno, and I think the same with Yates. Yates put everyone in the bin in Terreno on that stage, 
I think he's probably going to do the same here if he discovers the legs again. I, I don't know what happened with Simon Yates because he shouldn't be getting spat at 5.3. He should be nose breathing at 5.3. He should be like having a chat like mid zone two, just being like, you're right, yeah, yeah. Um, like this is, yeah, so it, it's a bit odd. Maybe the cold weather, maybe he didn't like it. I, I don't know. Um, we'll probably never find out because the team won't say, but it was interesting because his team was obviously on the front a lot and then didn't really do anything. And if you look at the, the bottom of the, the stage, 270 normalized, okay, that's not, it's not a walk in the park, but it's not March. And I doubt Sergio Samia was a protected rider either. Um, if we look at Knox, who probably was, obviously his power file was um, quite a lot higher. Um, like even so, here's 270 normalized for Carboni. So maybe it was harder than expected. Maybe, maybe 270 normalized is, is harder than we thought, but I don't know. Um, I don't know what happened to Yates. I guess we'll, we'll find out. Here's 280 normalized again. So yeah, maybe it just was a harder day out and that's why, you know, Sammy Yates wasn't used to it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Written here, 5.3 watts per kilo for 12 minutes, but again, I can't really see why he blocked. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video about the Giro. Um, Roglic data is going to come out soon, probably tomorrow. Um, and I've also got a preview for Belmont Hill Climb on the weekend, which is the biggest hill climb in the UK after nationals in terms of people and it's closed roads. And obviously I'm doing it and the, uh, my uni club is supporting it. So obviously a, a video on it has to be done and it would be incredibly rude not to. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you in the next one.